So just to give you a, a, a little a little intro, this is a, an old paper showing what happens if you uh, if you use digital information technology. That is, when your phone rings and you do some other work, it turns out that attention goes down and memory goes down. So digital information technology interferes with uh, mental processing. Oops, I should do this. Yes. Sometimes you don't realize that. Well, here we go. So, 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 so this is um, this is what I've just shown to you. Um, this study uh, does, does a completely different thing. So it doesn't ask what happens if your smartphone rings. It asks what what happens when your smartphone just sits there and doesn't ring. So how do you how do you do science on a non-ringing smartphone? Well. You compare the smartphone sitting here on your desk with having it on uh, in, in, in your pocket down there in your, in, in your uh, bag or having it in the other room. And then you, you happen to, to, to have a task, and the task is either some, some thinking problems or uh, you do a, an IQ test. Okay? So it's a very simple study. You, you sit at a computer and you either do some questions and you have to answer them, or you do an IQ test. And the smartphone is here, in the bag, or in the other room. So let's look at the results of what you're doing uh, on the screen. Left is uh, working memory capacity, and uh, right is uh, fluid intelligence. They used Raven's matrices for those who interested in, in this stuff. So when the smartphone's on the desk, your working memory capacity is lower than compared to the other room, and the, the, the bag is, is sort of in between. And uh, the same thing with intelligence. And in fact, if you look at the effect size in IQ points, you can do this, you can do the math from these data that, I, that you see here on the right, then the difference between having your smartphone on the desk and having it in the other room is about as big as the difference between a person who has only the middle school in Germany, that is 10 years of education, uh, or uh, high school education, that is 12 to 13 years at school, which is quite a big difference. So what is this thing doing by just hanging out here? It's not bad radiation interfering with your brain or whatever. It's, f it's much simpler than this. If it sits here, it, it's constantly, in a way, nagging at you. Look at me. There could be some interesting news. Your social status could have changed in social media, or whatever. Your friends could have, could have said goodbye to you. Uh, who knows what just happened in the last moment? And you could find out by just, well, turning to this. Well, when you are engaged in doing something else, and this thing is constantly sitting there and nagging at you, you have to use mental capacity not to look at it. And in fact, what you see here is the measurable effect of you trying not to use your smartphone while it sits there, okay? When it sit, doesn't sit there, you have to have less, you have to spend less mental effort not to look at it because it's not there, okay? So this is just the effect of the mental effort um, that you have to engage when you have the smartphone ready at your fingertips, so to speak, and you don't want to use it. And the effect is actually quite big. So it draws attention. Okay. Well, what, so if, if that happens, for, well, for a few minutes a day, that's okay. But if it happens 10 hours a day, that disrupts thinking. And if you disrupt thinking 10 hours a day, your brain development is going to be interfered with. And that's something we should worry about because brain development is something that happens in a certain uh, amount of lifespan in childhood, adolescence, and early adulthood, and that's it. And once you're done with that period, you basically live the rest of your life with the brain that you got during that period. That's a problem. Just to make sure we are kind of up to speed. This is, this is a, a strange publication. It came out in, uh, in 2000, and, well, just about a year ago. This, these are the authors, and it, in fact, it's even more authors. He has more authors. Why is this? Because they, they basically 
aggregated one, 123,984 MR scans across more than 100 studies from 100,000 plus human participants between 115 days of age post conception that is, they are in the womb still to 100 years of age so it's it's the biggest study on developing brains ever these are the individual studies where the data went in there this is a summary slide and this is an even well decluttered summary slide so what you see here basically is uh, across the lifespan, which is logarithmically scaled on the uh, x-axis, you see that a number of parameters of brain development basically have their peak early in life. The, the lighter blue curve is a um, cortical thickness. It peaks by about one, one year, and then it decreases. So brain development is decreasing cortical thickness having a decreasing cortical thickness. This is important because sometimes you get studies showing, oh, we have done such and such and the cortex got bigger. Isn't that great? No, it's not. You interfere with development if you have a, a, a thicker cortex in, let's say, adolescence or what. Um, gray matter volume peaks by about six years and um, uh, white matter volume peaks by about 25 years. And the, the, the darker blue curve is well, empty space in your head, basically. It's filled with water, with some, some sort of water, and that goes up late in life because this is ba basically telling you that brain volume is going down and the volume of other larger bodies in our head, well, that are filled with water, the ventricles, goes up. So what happens when brains develop? Well, this Nature paper summarized it in with the title The Mental Wealth of Nations. And, and you get kind of this overview and are just focusing on the start of it. Um, that is, your brain is getting better and better. It says mental capital. Well, these economists, they talk about capital no matter what they mean. Uh, the, a, 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 better, a, a, a better name for what, what's on the y-axis would be education. Or probably brain development or actually brain building, because we know when, when learning processes take place, you are building the connections between the neurons in your brain, and the connections, they sprout by their own, but then they are removed again, and only those that you used in between are not removed. So you better use as many as connections as you can, such that few are removed, and you, you get your brain thereby up to speed and this is this is meant by the yellow curve it's get, getting up and and you see some hints what's what's good and what's bad well so tobacco use poor diet drugs and alcohol by your mother is not good for brain development in the womb then it's good parenting skills and early home experience that brings you up it's early stress exposure that has a down effect supportive teaching and education has an up effect trauma and uh, antisocial behavior, teenage pregnancy, smoking have down effects. And um, resisting peer pressure and social engagement, helping other people has an up effect, okay? And uh, well, when it declines, there are all kinds of things that are not good for your brain, which is why your brain capacity goes down. But there is physical activity, mental activity, social activity, correct medication, and a correct diet, Mediterranean, Mediterranean diet, for example, uh, that, that keeps you up and lots of stuff that's not good that brings you down, okay? So it's important that we, we know about these things and we know even more than this. And, um, and the, the interesting thing is what, what follows from here. And what follows from here is, is, for example, this. This curve, you can Google it, it's called the Hackman curve because, the econ again, it's the economist Hackman um, who wondered what is the return of investment in education depending upon the age of the to be educated. And, um, and he published this paper in Science Magazine where he kind of summarized a lot of data to come up with this curve. This is the, the main result of the paper. That is, if you want to spend a euro in education, you better, well, you get most of the of, of return in preschool. And in school, the return is still okay. 
And well, later in life, it gets, you get less and less return f for your money that you spend in education. So that we, in Germany, we pour a lot of money in post-job training. Actually, post-job retraining, okay, billions. We could use that money that has a very little effect, okay, into if, you, if we use these billions, put it in the kindergarten, we would solve many problems there that end up as school problems already in kindergarten, so they wouldn't even turn up. Why doesn't this happen? Well, because they don't vote, and they do, and that's a problem. And every politician who changes, uh, well, for the investment in kindergarten, earns the, the fruits of this 20 years later, which is not good for career making immediately, which is why it doesn't happen. Okay, it's kind of a failure of our system, our political system. Well, and often we, we, we hear things like, my external brain, why think for yourself when you can outsource? We are kind of brainwashed with this. But if you think about it in terms of this curve and in terms of this curve, how do, why does this go up? Well, because you use your brain. Brains are used and thereby get better and better and better. So, the important thing is that when this happens, learning rate goes down over the age. This is biology. But when you use your brain a lot, you can still learn here. This, this is a very depressive chart, given that the audience is over six. So, so we are all back there, okay? But let me give you the upside of, of what I've just told you. And the upside is this. This computer has uh, a chip in it that processes information and another chip that stores information. This thing doesn't have storage and uh, CPU. It just has neurons, nerve cells, and they are connected. And the, they, they fire and send signals to each other. And this is the, the physical side of our mental life. No matter what you do, perceiving, seeing, hearing, planning, wishing, having an emotion, falling in love, no matter what, brain cells fire and send signals to each other, thereby changing the connection between them because synapses that fire, to neurons that fire together increase their connection. It's called wire together. Because of this, Plasticity of the brain, well, we remember, we, we remember things because the whole thing changes when it's used. And that's the most important insight and the most important finding in neuroscience over the last 50 years. The brain changes constantly according to its use, thereby getting better and better at its functionality. It doesn't have a hard drive. You know, the, for the hard drive in this, in this computer, there's a simple, a simple truism. If it's 50% full, it has 50% capacity left. And if it's 95% full, it has 5% capacity left. How is it with this? Well, think about two people, let's say Germans. This speaks German and this speaks German and four more languages. Now, both learn another language. Who is going to be better? This guy, who speaks already five, okay? And learning a new tool, this guy has never used much, many tools, and this guy has a workshop in the basement and use, likes to use tools. So they get a new tool, who is going to be better at using it? Again, this guy. Musical instruments, the same. The guy who already plays a few learns another one much more easily than somebody who has never done any musical instrument. What follows from this? No matter what you look at, you get the same effect. That is, the more you already know, the more you can do, the better you learn something new uh, in, in that same domain. Or have you ever met somebody who said, well, you know, I know five languages. I think my language saying percenters by now are full. No, this never happens, okay? They don't get full. In fact, somebody who, who knows 20 languages learn the 21st, learns the 21st in about six to eight weeks. We know that. And there is no limit. So you must realize that this thing has an interesting capacity. The more is in there, the more still fits in. That's actually, that characterizes your brain perfectly, okay? There's no principal limit, but the more is in there, the more fits in. Given this curve, 
you have to realize there's a consequence. If you are there and a lot is in there, you can continue learning easily, and you will. People talk a lot about lifelong learning these days. Well, you fix that when you're 20. Because once a lot is in there, you have a lot of interest and you, and you continue learning. Trouble, you get in trouble if you are 25 or 20 and nothing's in there because then you have problems getting more into it. Okay, That's a very important point. The more is in there, the more fits into it. Which is why this. Why use your brain? Because it's better to outsource. It's utter nonsense. We are, you, are often, you can often read articles about the digital natives. Hey, they don't know how to navigate. They use their smartphone. They don't know the phone numbers of their friends. They use their smartphone. They use their smartphone for all kinds of things. And then the article goes on. This is wonderful because thereby they save space here to do other things, which is utter nonsense. You can't save space here. So not learning English in school is not a good idea in order to learn Chinese better because you have some language area space left. Okay? It doesn't make any sense. But we are sometimes told that this is exactly what happens to digital natives, which is what's so good about them. This is nonsense. I'm very outspoken because I've discussed this a gazillion times with people who, who said, well, it's great they outsource because they, they can learn other things because they outsourced the, this other stuff. But notice, everything you didn't learn at younger age is not helping you learning more at older age, but it is, is an impairment for learning at older age. So you must not outsource anything at younger age. That's the important point I want to make. Brains don't download. They are used, and thereby they get better. And this is the point of well, this slide. And it, it, this also shows, again, what you can do to get up to speed with your brain. Bilingualism, hand use, music, sports, theater, bonding, family, purpose in work. That's all good. And now notice, notice the, the errors that go down. It is very early use of. Um, of uh, digital media. Nowadays, it's the smartphone. It used to be the television. And I did worry 15 years ago about two to three hours of television a day in childhood. Now, we, we all have to worry about about 10 hours digital screen media use in a in, in, in young age. Just to, I worried about this when I read this. This came out in 2006. It's a German study. And uh, about 2,000 kids had to draw, five-year-old kids had to draw a man. Uh, pediatricians did that while they did this, some, some um, workups of the, of the five-year-olds. And then the, the drawings were rated. Are there arms? Is there a head, eyes, etc., hair? And then you get, well, you can get thir 13 points at the maximum. And they, so these were the ratings. And it turns out the, 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 the drawings were not as good the more, the more uh, scre screen time the kids had. The mothers were asked, how much time do, does your kid spend on TV? And you see the TV time in hours. But, but this is quantitative evidence that, well, the quality of the drawings got down. Let me just show you some of the drawings. So the difference between the drawings, the five drawings up and the five drawings down is two hours of TV a day. I think this, this really opens your eyes, doesn't it? It's just two hours of TV, that's it, okay? And they look a bit, well, disabled compared to those, okay? Which is why this still, actually, I got this slide, even though the study was done 50 kilometers from where I live, from somebody who lives in California. Um, because he came across this, and I met him uh, in, in, in a scientific meeting, and I said, Manfred, you should know this. I said, I'd, I'd never seen it. He said, well, it's from actually where you are. Okay, so um, it, it made its way around the globe, but you probably haven't come across it because it's al already almost 20 years old. Now all of this is supported by large-scale evidence. Let me just go through this very quickly. This came out in 2019. Two and a half thousand uh, kids and their mothers were followed up longitudinally, and they checked um, screen time at 24 months, at 60, uh, 40, uh, 
36 months and 60 months. And then they did a mental developmental test, the ASQ3, at 24 months, 36 months, and 60 months. And it turns out, and this is how this is published these days. Uh, sorry, but th th this, it's, it's actually fairly easy. Media consumption at two years is negatively cor correlated with media consumption at, 30, uh, at three years. The other thing, such that um, the dumper people look more at screens, it would be this, is not there. This is the, the, uh, the there's a broken line and, it, uh, and the, the number is minus 0.01. That is, there's zero connection between this and this. But there is a, con a negative connection from here to here. And there's another negative connection from here to here. And again, not there. So what you can clearly, what, what, what the authors can conclude from these longitudinal data, that's actually tough to come up with because you have to get them over three years for three times and the same people and two and a half thousand of them. Well, that's really a big study showing that screen time impairs brain development. When you have kids at school age, this is the study of four and a half thousand kids um, in, uh, in 21 communities in the USA, and, uh, and they took three var variable sleep, physical activity, and screen time, and they found that um, the th then they measured these effects on, 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 their, on their mental ca capability. They also did a test on, well, mental capacity, so development. And it, it turns out that sleep is good, that good, and uh, physical activity is about that good. And screens are about that bad. So they, had th th they looked at the effects of these three variables, and they clearly showed that sleeping and physical activity have positive effects. But, and they are, well, sizable, but not that big. But then there is one big effect, a whooping effect, and that's screens have a negative effect. So looking at this, and looking at the curve, it's interesting to see what does that mean for old age? So mental decline, dementia, literally means down with your mind. And for every decline, there is a very simple truism. The higher you start with your descent, the longer it takes you to get, actually get down. Okay? That's, the same, that's the fact for dementia as well. And let me just, the Lancet is, well, the one of the most well-known and high-powered um, medical journals. And this is the Lancet Commission on Dementia Prevention, Intervention and Care, 2020 report. And the bottom line of the report is this graph. So what you see here is um, your life cycle, and you see a gray curve, and the gray is risk unknown. 60% of your risk of dementia is unknown. It's basically genetic. So you can now screen you for your genes, but as long as we don't have any, a, a good therapy, it doesn't make any sense. But just to make sure, 60% you don't, ha you can't influence because it just happens to you, because it's genetic. But there's 40% that's actually up to you. For example, there is, uh, the biggest thing is hearing loss. So if you have hearing loss, Go to the, your, uh, your ear doctor and get, and get hearing aids because if you don't, your risk of dementia increases by 8%. And 8% sounds little, but you can influence only 40% anyway. And 8% of 40%, that's 20% of what you can do. Compared to this, obesity is 1%. Alcohol, more than 21 units per week. That's Three shots a day, that's quite a bit, okay? Gives you 1% increased risk of dementia. Um, hypertension, 2%. Traumatic brain injury, 3%. So that's earlier in life. Uh, later in life, smoking, 5%. Depression, 4%. Social isolation, we heard about it, 4%. Physical inactivity, 2%. Air pollution, 2%. Diabetes, 1%. So these are the things you can do something about. But what is the biggest thing? This. Less education early in life gives you a 7% increased risk of dementia at older age. And again, sounds little, but it's 7% of, of the 40% that you can do something about. Okay. Now let's be clear. There are more studies, and they came out in the recent two to three years, that made this... this 
this idea very clear. This came out in PNS uh, in 2019. Um, they, they, they had a very lo longitudinal study, and what comes out is that the intellectual gains due to education plateau in late adolescents, early adulthood. And if these cognitive gains reach the asymptote, okay, then having gotten up higher is better later because the descent basically is the same. No matter, no matter much what you are doing here, there is not so much effect there, but if you start higher, any descent will take you longer to get to dementia. So the idea is when, if you're high enough when you're 20, and you get your dementia, you'll get it at 150. So you were dead before, so you don't get it. That's the point, okay? And this came out in, 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 in this study also. Um, this is um, <laughs> in, in a Danish cohort of 500,000. They, they measured IQ when these conscripts for the army were tested at the age of 20 in the 60s. They, when they were 20, and then they, they were tested again when they were 62, with the same test. And then they waited another 80 years and checked for dementia at 78. And it turns out that the test at 20 predicts dementia at 78 almost as good as the test at 62. The test at 62 is, is less than 1% adding to the variance that the, uh, that the uh, test with 20 already uh, explained. That is, it is really your, your, your height, your mental capability at 20 that decides if you're dement at 78. Okay, this, again, a very interesting study that, that clearly showed this connection. This is again the same, the same thing and again shows it's when you are higher up, the same decline leads you well to, to cross your mental threshold later. It's not the dotted line that you somehow get dementia because you go, you go steeper down. No, you, it's the same gradient, but if you, if, if you go down from higher up, you reach your, your threshold later on. And, uh, and again, there is discussion of that, not because individuals show less cognitive decline while they are older, but because they will be able to afford more decline because they are before reaching the threshold, because they started higher up. That's how it works. And again, another study showing again the same thing. Um, yet another study showing again the same thing. This Berlin aging study, they found out that the, you have less dementia more recently, and, the, and the, the very simple reason is they, the people were better trained uh, during their school life, which is why the more the younger aging cohort gets their dementia later. It's not because they're doing something better now, it's because they did better at, educa at education until they were 20. Okay. And this is a paper that came out on the same issue about a year ago. They talk about digital dementia and they clearly state um, that um, the Center for Disease Control, they say, well, in 2060, we'll have a, a, a two-fold uh, increase of dementia. But they cl clearly see, hey, these people where, they, they, th where the CDC is, is, does, does the, the calculations, they were born in 1950, they came up without smartphones and anything, they didn't have any destructions, they educated their brains, and now we calculate the, their risk of dementia. Now we, we project that in, 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 into 2060 and we found a two-fold increase of dementia. But these authors say, wait a minute, the people in 2060, they will be born in 1990 and they will have had smartphones and tablets and everything in their, in their educational life, which is why they will be further down, which is why the number of demented people will not double, but probably be four to six-fold as much as we have now. So they take all this seriously and do the math. It was mentioned that we have problems with eyesight too. So myopia, short-sightedness is a big problem. And um, because of time constraints, 
I will only mention it. And the other, in, in, in the ophthalmology literature in, in, in medicine, it's called a myopia pandemic. So it's a global issue that when people, this is not only used by five billion people, so it's the most, it's used by most people. But every, every single person uses it most of the time compared to other digital screen media. And third, it's the smallest. And that's a big problem because it's watched not this far or that far, it's watched this far. So it's the driver of myopia these days. It used to be reading books, but German young people read books for 15 minutes a day. That doesn't harm your eyesight. But if you look at this for five hours a day at short range, that harms your eyes. It causes, it actually causes myopia. That's what we know by now. During the corona pandemic, um, we really learned people watched more screens and thereby myopia really went up. So we have a natural experiment showing the effects of watching ever more screens, you have ever more myopia. South Korea, the country that really has Samsung had started with smartphone overuse by young people 15 years ago. There, normally you have, well, 10% myopic people the people under 20 years who have suffered from myopia in South Korea is 95%. In China, it's 80%. In Europe, it's about 50%. So it's going to be a big problem. Well, you may say, oh, well, short-sightedness, you just wear glasses, that's that. No, it's not. Short-sightedness is the major risk factor for macular degeneration, retinal ablation, cataract, and glaucoma. And these are the four major causes of blindness from 50 years onward. So we are talking about the major risks of blindness being increased by the deformation of the eyeball, which is what happening, what's happening, what's causing myopia. So we are talking not about a few blind people, we are talking about tens of millions of blind people. And we are talking about tens of millions of more demented people. And we are also talking about tens of millions of people who are, because we have a third pandemic, it's the inactivity pandemic who are more inactive, thereby have put more weight on, and 70% of overweight kids become overweight adults. And uh, being overweight is a risk factor for stroke and for heart attacks, which is the, the, mo the number one killer in Western nations, developed countries anyway. And increasing an already large number gives you another large number, which is why we are talking again about tens of millions of strokes and heart attacks. If you do the math, smartphone use today costs more than global warming. And it does cost so in between 2050 and 2060, not in 2100. And that's the big problem that we face here which is why I'm glad I have been here and could tell you this. You can multiply this and you can make sure that this is going to change. We have to. And we owe this to our next generation. We can't let their education and their health depend upon the business interests of a few rich Californian companies, Apple, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Microsoft. They are making money out of the time our kids spend on this and they don't care about our kids. We do, about their health and their education. Thanks.